Welcome to Cruise Ship Crime Investigators, the book series. Book two, Serial Killer. Chapter seven, Bank Job. Like the opening of a cheesy movie, Kieran and Hunter are an unnerving presence in a large bank. They have observed that the security guard by the door has taken notice of them and signalled to his colleague, who is patrolling on the other side by the manager's office. They think we're staking the place out, Hunter whispers to Kieran, turning away. The distant guard starts to approach, always able to take cover behind the rounded counter. Nice stalking. I hope they don't shoot us. It would be very strange to have come this far and get whacked in a bank by a pair of trigger-happy old-timers, Kieran says. Turn away. You're making them nervous. I'm making them nervous. Don't make any sudden moves. Don't reach in your pocket and stop looking at them. Kieran turns to Hunter, miffed. You're serious. I can't put my hand in my pocket or I'll get shot. I'm just saying... If you go for a weapon, they might pour one on you. I don't have a weapon. Kieran, you're in America. Never make a fast move to a pocket. I don't have a pocket. I'm dressed for the beach. Sure, they should be laughing. But you're telling me, when that door, which we are waiting to open, opens, if I reach into my pocket for the passport they've asked me to bring, they'll shoot me. Kieran asks, looking at the door into the back rooms of the bank. What do you think? You work the front line. I never expected to be trading Iraq for Miami. Digs against my country will also get you shot. By me. Just behave. You're in Southern America. People carry guns. I never realized Miami was in Southern America. Where did you think it was? North Cuba. Hunter nearly goes for him, but the door opens. Mr. Watarski and Mr. Phillips, I'm Ron Stone. As Kieran gets level with him, he stops. Ron, would you tell your two security guards that we've come here to open an account? I'm British and I'm not used to being shot in the back as I go for my passport. The young manager smiles and waves the two security men to stand down. The guard's hands relax away from their guns. Kieran pulls his passport out and the door closes with them inside the bank offices. Big mistake, Ron. If I had a gun, you'd now be dead or captured. They would be out of the game as we are behind the bulletproof counter, Kieran explains. Hunter shakes his head in disbelief. Kieran holds out his hand to shake that of the nervous Ron Stone. Kieran Phillips, Mr. Wotoski and I run a security consultancy a few blocks down, next to Wild Mary's. We could be here quicker than the police. Am I being robbed? Ron asks nervously. No, Hunter replies, and his phone rings. Excuse me, sir. Wotoski, he answers flatly, turning away. Kieran signals for Ron Stone to lead them on. We require a safety deposit box, Ron, for these, Kieran says, putting the bricks wrapped in brown paper on the desk. And we have $9,000 in cash to open an account. My passport? When Mr. Big Businessman gets off the telephone, he'll give you his ID. Hunter avoids them, talking into his phone. We're kind of busy now. How urgent is this? Well, if you don't know, and you're just fishing, do you mind if I ask you to call me back when this is a contract? So you're by Wild Mary's, Ron asks, still trying to suss the two men out. Kieran hands over the forms. Bank deposit box application form filled out. Bank account application all filled out. Joint names will be filing a company later. Wiltowski and Phillips, Hunter interrupts. Phillips and Wiltowski, Kieran corrects him. A teller machine counts the money, puts it in a band, then stamps the deposit paperwork and signs across the stamp. 
Ron Stone, signs below the stamp and hands the receipt to Kieran. I'll walk down to your unit tomorrow with the account details. I'd like to see where you are. Fantastic, Kieran enthuses. We have a modern, contemporary unit. Near Wild Mary's? A fixer-upper, Ron. Hunter eyes Phillips. I'll take you to the safe deposit. Kieran and Hunter follow Ron around and down some stairs into the basement. Who was on the phone? Kieran asks Switowski. Possible first job. Same company? Nope. Biggest cruise company on the seas. And you told them we were busy? I did. In the security basement room, their box is closed on the two wrapped bricks of money. It is locked and slid through a small gate in the rails into the secure vault. A fourth armed guard takes it and locks it in one of the spaces that are floor to ceiling. They're taken back upstairs and walked back into the public area. How is there enough trade for a safe depository out here? Kieran asks. This is Miami. You don't ask questions about money. Hunter pockets the key. You could put a nail in the wall for that, Kieran mocks with a grin. Before leaving, Hunter addresses the guard at the door to the street. You guys ever need extra hours? Always open if the money's right, man, the guard says. I could have had a gun, Kieran adds. We weren't worried about you. We were worried about the big guy the guard retorts. Kieran looks at his badge. Isaiah Success? That's your real name? No. I wear someone else's name badge, case I shoot a smart ass. Kieran follows a very amused hunter out into the harsh sunshine. I liked him, Hunter says with a smirk. Chapter 8. Fried Green Tomatoes Potoski and Phillips pause at Wild Mary's. Shall we go in and introduce ourselves? Kieran smirks. Hunter pulls the door open, which chimes an old-time bell. The diner is rich in colour. The seats are red and cream on a chequered pattern of white and black floor tiles. To the left, where the diner wraps around the corner, there is more room. A classic jukebox looks very dead, but it is in front of a small dance area. They notice a sign only dance on the tables after they've been cleared. Funny, says Kieran. What can I get you two gentlemen? A confident, happy African lady asks. That's a welcome that'll have us coming back, Hunter starts. They are shown to the right, the side near the grill. There are stalls at the counter, a middle section of double tables and doubles along the window roadside. You two handsome gentlemen sit down here where everyone can see you, she says, putting menus on the table. And the ships come in, Kieran says. Sorry? He's British. Strange sense of humour, Hunter says, looking at the menu. Nice jukebox. 1950s. Well, it's a 1250. Still play? You got a quarter? Sorry, I only have Benjamins, Kieran quips. Stupid humour, but I love your accent. Mary takes a coffee pot from the counter, turns the cups on their table and fills them. No one calls them Benjamins, not down here. They call them Yards. Not that many round here would have one. We don't get many British people in here. She leans back on her stance and looks at him. Say something else. Mary, do you get much trade here since the local merchants moved to the mall? I like that. Real nice. Do you? He repeats. Do I what? Kieran Phillips, he says standing, takes her hand and kisses it. The pleasure is all mine. My question is, do you get much trade here since the mall opened? I ask because we are your new neighbours. The first unit that way. Well, if you were opening a trade that needs people... You could be in the wrong place. We are maritime consultants. What kind of time is that? 
she asks. Maritime, shipping. We don't get many ships pass by, she says. Two eggs over easy and some grits, please, Mary, Hunter cuts in. You'll be one in fried green tomatoes. I will. You will. My mama's recipe, and she used to sit where you're sitting, Mary says, and turns to Kieran. You eating, or you just waiting for a ship? I'll have the same, please, Mary, Kieran says. Stan? I heard. Stan shouts back. I'll be back with the food. In the meantime, Mr. Phillips, maybe you could look in the restroom. That's meantime, not maritime. Because water seems to be coming from your shipping unit next door. Mary leaves. Folks round here have a good sense of humour, Hunter states, rising and walking to the restroom. Phillips follows. The restroom is clean and functional, and she has floor cloths rolled out to dam a canal, so water runs to the floor drain. But the water is not coming from their adjoining wall, but hers. Kieran steps out of the restroom and opens the next door along, which is a storage cupboard. Water is running down the party wall to the floor and out of the side wall to the restroom, guided by the same ingenuity of cloths. Considering the mess, she was very polite, Kieran says, heading back to the table. She's probably been ringing the landlord. No idea she had new neighbours. No, it must have been a shock to see people around here. Mary is setting two places ready for them. Think this might become a routine for us, Mary. You boys are welcome. What's your name? Hunter Weltarski. Hunter. I like that name. What did he say his name was? Kieran. Like Chevron with a K. That's it, Kieran says to be easy. Then I hope that's not an oil spill you got going down my wall. She nods, looking Kieran up and down. Kieran is struck dumb. Kevron, your food's getting cold. Mary, we hope to be away a lot, Hunter starts. I was getting excited about the trade. I don't want to disappoint, so how about I pay for breakfast even when we're not here, if we can run a phone extension cable through to you, and you can tell folk who visit or call that we are not in. Mary puts her hands on her hips, thinking. Oh, y'all friends stupid enough to know that if you ain't here, you ain't here? He doesn't have any friends, Kieran adds quickly. Oh, they're your friends. I get it. 